Greetings, you silly little sea creatures. It's Carla, I'm back again in my kitchen and today we are going to grab a tomato by the tooth and drag it into the beautiful salty waters and come back out with a shrimp and then toss it into some spicy pasta. That's right, <laughs> I am making spaghetti with spicy tomato scampi and it is Fast, fast, fast. Summer, summer, summer. C, C, C. Shrimp, shrimp, shrimp. It's gonna be so delicious. Takes literally seven seconds. All right, before I do anything, let's just talk about the origins of scampi and what people mean when they say shrimp scampi or spaghetti with shrimp scampi. Scampi is the Italian word for langoustines, okay? This is a sea creature, a crustacean that's somewhere between like a crawfish and a spiny lobster, right in there, big, crustacean-y guy. When the Italians came to America, they didn't have langoustines here, so they started just calling the shrimp scampi because they were like, close enough, it's good enough for me. At home we would call this uh, scampi, we don't have the scampi here, we have the shrimp, the shrimp are now the scampi. And the way that the shrimp were prepared was the way that the langoustine had been prepared, which was butter, garlic, white wine, yada yada. So that's how shrimp scampi got to be shrimp scampi, but literally shrimp scampi in the minds of the Italian Americans is shrimp shrimp. So it's totally ridiculous. As an Italian American myself, I decided that there are no rules and I'm gonna do whatever I want. So that's what's happening. That's why these are my ingredients. And the one I'm going to start with is the tomato. The goal for this tomato sauce is for it to be super fresh, super seasonal, super quick cooking, and really easy to like get going. So instead of even slicing and dicing anything, I'm gonna use the large holes of this box grater to turn it into essentially what is a tomato passata, which is just fresh tomato that have been pureed without putting them in a food processor, which is gonna aerate them. So I started by cutting the edge of the tomato off, and as I grate it, the skin is just getting kind of pushed back and unfurling. That's like the best word that I could use to describe it. So that's kind of what it looks like at the end. I'm gonna take my pastry scraper, just kind of going under this, and then we'll do like the trap door at the carnival and have the tomato come out. Few cloves of garlic, thinly sliced. They're thinly sliced because the tomato sauce is gonna cook very quickly, so they're cut smallly, so they will go fastly. And then I also have my shrimps. I am allergic to raw shrimp. I can't eat them and I can't touch them. And that goes for any raw crustacean, including a langoustine or a lobster. You can use any size shrimp. These are large peeled and deveined shrimp. You could leave it whole. I just want to be able to twist up a little nest of pasta and be able to spear a piece of a shrimp and not have it be unwieldy and also get like good shrimp distribution in the sauce. So one and a half to two inch pieces and that's it. That's all, really all the prep you have to do. I'm using shrimp because I think tomato and shrimp go incredibly well together. They're easy to get, they're relatively affordable, but you can use this same base of this tomato sauce. You could leave the chili out and have it not even be spicy. You could do it with nothing at all and just finish it with some grated parm or a few pieces of mozzarella. You could steam clams open in it. You could steam mussels in it. Um, I've also done it with lobster, so it's all very fast cooking. Let's scampi on out of here, get it going. Oakley doakley. First thing you wanna do is get the pasta water on because honestly you would wanna get the pasta water on before you start the sauce because the sauce is so fast. I've got a nice wide deep pot skillet. You could use a Dutch oven. You want something with a little bit of a lip because a pound of pasta ultimately is gonna be in here with our shrimpy, spicy, tomatoey, scampi. I'm gonna go over medium heat and just put like a ton of butter in it. That's one thing about the original. I do really, I do really care for butter, garlic, shrimp, great together. Butter and tomato sauce, great together. Butter and garlic alone, great together. So you, you, you really can't lose. I'm waiting for this to melt. My heart wants to put the garlic in now, but 
If I do that, it'll stick and burn. I see foaming. My garlic is going in while everything is blooming and perfuming and infusing. I'm gonna put in my chili flakes. I'm using crushed red chili flake, which in the kind of ordinary chili flakes that we get at the supermarket is pretty spicy. You could dial back the heat by using just a pinch. You could go 100% just with black pepper, or you could use something a little less spicy, like Aleppo pepper or mirage or gochugaru. Um, but I, I like this hot, picante, caliente. Garlic is translucent. It's aromatic. I definitely don't want to burn my chilies. Adding the tomatoes. These are gonna sputter and spatter a little bit because this has like a very high liquid content and this is a high fat content. And that's what happened when those two things come together. I'm starting with fresh tomatoes because I love the flavor of fresh tomato and I wanna preserve that. This dish is not about like a really long cooked ragu kind of a flavor or a very reduced jammy kind of a flavor. We're cooking this like only as long as it takes to kind of bring out all of the flavors and marry the flavors between the chili and the garlic and the tomato and the butter. But I don't wanna go past that. So I have a really wide pan, which is gonna help with that like quick evaporation. And this whole thing is gonna be in here for 10 minutes. Let's do a little salt and peps. Let me use my Sicilian salt. It's kind of on the, on the vibe with the whole tomato and ocean breezes and Italian island vibes. And I'm also gonna take some basil and just put it in without even chopping it or doing anything with the leaves, these whole sprigs. I'm gonna remove them afterwards and keeping them in big pieces will allow me to do that. Um, and I don't really want like pieces of basil necessarily cooking into the sauce. I just want the aroma and the perfume of them. Sauce is underway. Water vigorously boiling. I'm gonna vigorously salt it. And this is a pound of spaghetti. I think any like long noodle that you like is a great choice. I'm not a big linguine person, but you could totally use it. You could use pericatelli, you could use bucatini, you could use a thick spaghetti, you could use spaghetti alla chitata. They're all good. I'm just going with a ni nice bronze cut spaghetti today. And I'm gonna cook this as I always do, just two to three minutes less than what the package says. So in this case, it's just gonna be about five minutes. My sauce has been cooking for a couple minutes, so they are going to be very synchronized and the pasta will finish cooking in the sauce. If you wanna hear more about the three tenets of being a pasta daddy, which is undercook, season, and emulsify, um, check out my video on daddy pasta, where anyone and everyone can be a pasta daddy. Most of that available liquid, like all of the liquid that ended up on the cutting board has cooked off. So this has the texture, it's still light, and it's still very puree-ish, but it doesn't have the vibe of something that is watery, which is great. So it's just starting to thicken. Let's check the nudes. Hmm, still pretty crunchy in the center. I'm gonna give them 30 seconds, and then we're gonna party. I turned the sauce off completely because the pasta wasn't quite yet done, but the sauce was. So now I'm bringing it back up to a gentle little simmer. This basil has given its service to the tomato union. Uh, so I'm just gonna take it out because it might get broken into pieces when all the tossing goes on. The shrimp will release a little bit of liquid as they cook as well. So those guys are going in. This is always fun with a long noodle. Oh! Okay, all right. <laughs> Not bad. I'm a trained professional. Everything I do is totally intentional. All right, so in the time that the shrimp are taking to cook through, the pasta is gonna get sauced. And I can tell definitely needs some pasta cooking liquid to bring this together. And I don't want the shrimp to overcook. So 
adding them at the very end and cooking them really just until they go from gray to this like rosy pink and white is the key. And the sauce is like coating everything, but it's not coating it in a beautiful, glossy, luxurious way, which is really what I'm after. This pasta water is not gonna water down the sauce. It's going to finish cooking the pasta. It's gonna finish cooking the shrimp and it's going to give the sauce more body and more ability to emulsify and coat everything. So yeah, it looks like a lot of water in the pot, but trust the process. Toss and sauce. This is why I left the spaghetti kind of crunchy because of this thyme. So the noodles are getting seasoned and they're also finishing cooking and they're releasing even more of their starch into the sauce. I'm feeling really luxurious today. So we're gonna also add a knob of butter, which definitely my Italian ancestors were not throwing butter all around especially my dad's side of the family, which was from the South. They would have been definitely throwing some olive oil around, but we're in the new world, so we get the butter. All right, this is starting to look gorgeous now. So the goal with this kind of a sauce for me, when you get to the bottom of your bowl, there should be enough of this tomato sauce that you just wanna have that last piece of crusty bread to dip into, that last perfect bite that's mostly sauce, and have plenty of it. Mm-hmm, mm. That very blonde garlic flavor with the sweetness of the tomato is now inside of the noodle, which is exactly what we wanted to have happen. And then it's just got like the kiss of a shrimp. Pucker up. Last little toss, sauce gloss. This is a dish that you want all of your people to have their butts in the chairs the second it's done because it is so fresh, it is so hot. I don't want the shrimp to overcook. So, is in seeds, it's time to go. My saucy, glossy friends. This to me screams pergola. It screams like the trellis with the vines, but you're also at the seaside and you also have a nona. It's lunch. There could be some nice cold white wine. Maybe you're in a wet bathing suit. Maybe you even got a little sun today. I don't know, this is all like a fantasy and it's all very fantastical. But I feel like when you're eating a spicy tomato scampi, um, the aromas are gonna take you wherever you wanna go. And I'm going to a tomato pergola. I will not be putting cheese on my pasta, but I will be putting a little drizzle drazzle of olive oil. Again, possibly breaking some unwritten rule, and I frankly don't care. A little more chili flake. I mean, pretty good, I think. So this is what I was after. It's like that shrimp anchor. You can tuck it on the bottom of the fork. Mmm, mmm. First of all, butter and tomato, that's what you get on the beginning. But then you get like the sweet, sweet garlic and these perfectly cooked spaghettis that are creamy because they got tossed all around and they got all of their outers like scratched up. And then the shrimp is like so sweet and delicious and also infused with tomato flavor. And yeah, it's like instant vacation that you could go to on Tuesday night because the entire thing took 20 minutes. I'm not going to Italy this summer, but this is if this is as close as I get, I'm gonna be okay with it. If you're not booking any travel this summer, but you would like to like and subscribe, I would really appreciate that. Let's all just smash that button, shall we? Do it for me and my little shrimps.